By its very nature, many impossible things happen in science fiction. Characters travel on spaceships, moving faster than the speed of light. Plasma weapons shoot what is definitely not acting or looking like plasma. And on the set of The Expanse, I gently drift into Adam Savage's arms in zero G. <laughs> Clearly, none of that could happen in real life. And today I want to add yet another impossibility to the list. It's this move right here. No one can do this, and science explains why. Doesn't it always? <laughs> it sure does, supercomputing sentient girlfriend. It sure does. Now entering the facility. Now, I'm certain you're familiar with the move that I'm talking about, even if it doesn't have an official name. Sure, you've seen Darth Vader do it, but you can see the classic neck lift in just about every medium, from me if I actually ate my vegetables, to Wonder Woman, to Rocky, to even Beauty and the Beast. But although the neck lift isn't as flashy as something like sci-fi FTL or laser swords, I submit to you that it is equally as impossible as depicted, and the reason is twofold. We begin with human anatomy. There are around 650 skeletal muscles in the human body, ranging from the smallest, which is the stapedius muscle inside of your ears, which connects to the smallest bones in the body, to the largest muscle in the body, the gluteus maximus. Yeah. I'm low-key thick. With these muscles, humans can do amazingly powerful things. They can literally move mountains. And here's literally a mountain moving over a thousand pounds. He is many strong. Yeah, he's actually the strongest man on the planet. But the muscles that you would use for the neck lift aren't nearly as impressive as the mountain here. But they are more impressive than season eight of Game of Thrones. <laughs> I have opinions. Consider the muscles that you would actually use during the traditional neck lifting motion. If you exercise or you know human anatomy, you know that this will mostly engage your lateral and anterior deltoids. And if you exercise, you know that these muscles, small they be, do not lift as much weight as some of your larger muscles like your biceps or triceps. Especially yours uncalled for. The Darth Vader motion isn't an actual exercise, so I don't have any real numbers to compare it to, but it's close enough to a lateral one-arm raise that I'm going to compare it to that. You know, it's that exercise you do when you're trying to bring in all your groceries from the car all at once. Now, apparently, the maximum weight that a very, very elite lifting human can lift in this motion is somewhere between 60 and 110 pounds, or up to 49 kilograms. Now, you do not have to be a CEO, doctor, professor, PhD, lawyer, private investigator like me to know that that mass is a lot smaller than your average superhero or villain mass. So unless you are lifting something like a baby, don't do that. Do not do that. Do not neck lift babies. Do not. This motion is going to be physically impossible for only uh, everybody. Yeah, and if you don't believe me, go ahead. Go ahead, tough guy. Find a 20 pound barbell somewhere, pick it up, and then assume the neck lift position and just try to hold it up in that position for just 10 seconds. I couldn't do it. I don't think you can do it either unless you train that way. It's surprisingly difficult. And I can't wait for all of you to, to jump into the comments and say, oh, do you even lift, bro? Why couldn't you do that? I love reading that. I absolutely love reading that stuff. I love reading it all day. You know that I'm a person, right? I love it. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, but Cal, Darth Vader, and Superman, and others, some such as people, the neck lift are superhumanly strong. You ever think about that? Huh? huh? You ever think about that? First of all, guy with the voice, pipe down. Yes, I did. And second of all, even if you're superhumanly strong, this move still won't work. In fact, it won't make you look super strong. It'll make you look super lame. Because physics. Because physics. Doesn't that sound really familiar? Hmm. It doesn't ring a bell. Yeah, it doesn't ring a bell. Eh, all right, who cares? The success of a neck lift comes down to what human engineers call moments. A moment is a rotational force acting about a point, and that force is equal to the perpendicular distance from the line of force to the point of rotation. Consider here a simplified version of a neck lift. 
We have two masses and therefore two weight forces, but this does not describe the whole situation. Because the weight of the lifted person does not act through the apparent point of rotation right at the lifter's toes, there will be a significant moment at the shoulder of the lifter. As you can see, if a moment is equal to a force multiplied by a distance, then any distance the person is lifted at past the lifter's toes is gonna make their weight feel much, much heavier. For example, held out at an average arm's length, a 155 pound person would exert over 400 pounds feet of rotational force on small shoulder muscles. 563, 560. Oh, um, you weren't done with the diagrams yet. You should go, I should, you should just, the moment at the lifter's shoulders is not the only moment here. There is also a moment from the weight of the lifter at the feet acting in the opposite direction. So not only is the lifting moment here more than most humans can handle, because of the physics here, if you neck lift a mass similar to your own at arm's length, the lifting moment will always be larger and you will always tip over. So unless the lifter in this situation is very, very unnaturally heavy, the moments here will always be unbalanced and they will end up tipping over. In physics speak, this is because in this trope, as it's usually depicted, the distance from the center of mass of the lifting person to their feet is always smaller than the distance from the center of mass of the lifted person at arm's length to that same point of rotation, making the only viable weights very, very small. Like baby small. So as a super vi as a superhero enthusiast, I can tell you that you probably don't want to do this move because if you're trying to make yourself look all strong and cool and you tip over, it just makes you look super lame. And I know something about being lame. <laughs> okay, so while we're talking about moments and forces here, I wanted to show you a quick little trick that you can use with your friends to make them think you actually have superpowers. It's all based on what we're learning today. So find your strongest friend in your germ pod and have them grab you underneath your sweet, sweet pits. Hope you don't smell that bad. Then ask them to try and lift you up while you're very close to their own body. And they should be able to get something close to a lift. Now here's the trick. You're gonna say some such nonsense like you can cast a spell on the person or you can center your key or whatever else this guy in this hat is saying. And then you're gonna very subtly position yourself further away from the lifter's body with your arms. It doesn't have to be even that much further as you can see. You then use your arms to kind of lock off in this position and because of the moments and forces involved, because they get so much larger, you should be more or less impossible to lift like you were the first time and it's all because of physics but you got to explain to them it's because of physics if you say it's magic oh no i am always watching he has so many drones so many the classic neck lift might be impossible in my estimation that's totally accurate but that doesn't mean there aren't ways to make it work trust me why can a real strong boy like this lift me in this way but not like darth vader well, recall what we just learned about moments and forces. Where are the forces involved here? Of course, you have my weight and you also have discount Dave Batista's weight. Are there any moments, any rotational forces? Well, actually, no. Because the lines of force act through the point of rotation, since my weight is right over his feet, there is no perpendicular distance to multiply by. It's zero. And if you multiply the forces by zero, you get moments that themselves equal zero. No tipping, no problem. Plus, Walmart Dwayne The Rock Johnson here is lifting with the help of his biceps, which are much larger and much stronger. And here's a little Hollywood insider knowledge for you. He is not making this lift alone. Any stunt person that is doing a lift like this is working with the lifted person to make sure they are coordinated and everyone is safe and they get the shot that they want. I jumped into this position using my legs and then I supported myself in the air by pressing down on his shoulders. We worked together to have this effect. He would not have been able to do this lift without my help and he told me that. Why? Because the traditional neck lift is impossible. Dang. Where's Arya's loader body? I gotta try something. Physics 
forces, moments, it explains why the more realistic version of the neck lift is actually possible. The more realistic version being when I'm being lifted with my back up against a wall. Now, why does this work? Well, if you think about the forces involved here, there's an additional frictional force of my back up against the wall, but it's pointing upwards, not downwards. So when you multiply this with the distance and you compare it to the other moment, you see that they're in opposition to each other and it provides a necessary force to make the lift much, much easier easier. But without it, this lift is definitely not possible. And if you think you can do it without a science hack like this, you strong rose and bays, why don't you hop down in the comments, try it yourself, let me know what you think, and don't do it with a baby. Don't feel like I need to say that multiple times. Until next time. You can let me down. All right. You can. Ah. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. Today, especially, I want to recognize research assistant Ashley Randall and visiting scholar Rudy Grobler, the Groblinator. If you want to join the facility, if you want to don a silky white lab coat, put it over your shoulders, join me in Discord every day, get behind the scenes photos, see episodes early, get private live streams, not like that. You can go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill and join the facility today. And if you support us just enough, you get your name on RA here each and every week. And as you can see, there's literally hundreds of you. So I have no idea how I'm going to pass the time. So there is one caveat here that the math bears out, that if the lifter is very, very, very heavy, such that the moments then balance themselves out, then if they're also very strong, they could do a lift. So someone like... Uh, the Hulk, if, 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 if he was unnaturally very dense and very heavy, and with his Hulk arms, I guess you could make it work. But someone like Ivan Drago, no way. It would break his shoulders. <laughs> Not as catchy. Thanks for watching.